All right, I'm back with another real quick discussion about the economy as a whole and just kind of a way to think about um, the larger shifts that you're going to study, uh, most notably in your macroeconomics classes, that, that kind of relate to how behaviors compound and create the aggregate changes that we see causing things like a recession or expansion of the economy. So I always kind of refer to this as the confidence machine. Um, the economy runs on our confidence and our belief that, that we should spend the money that we have or that it's a good idea to buy something, um, buy a new car, buy a new house, start a new business, um, move across country, whatever it may be, the things that that um, are encouraged by additional confidence is uh, essentially um, going to increase and feed the economy and the machine of the economy. And any in the kind of reverse way, anything that, that causes us to lose confidence and feel like the economy is maybe headed in the wrong direction, is going to end up leading us to behave in a, in a, a certain way as well. And what we're going to see is how those attitudes in ourselves actually um, play out in the, larger, in the larger picture. So with this confidence machine um, scenario, we're just going to imagine $100 and we're going to kind of think about it like we've made our paycheck. And so this is $100 of our disposable income that we're deciding we're going to do something with it. And the heart of our decision here is the reason why we're choosing to spend this $100 instead of put it in savings is because maybe we have at least some level of confidence that we're not going to lose our job next week. Um, the economy is not going to crash and we'll be left with nothing. So we basically are, are confident that the, the world as we know it is going to kind of continue on. And so we decide to go uh, to our favorite pizza place and we're, we're going to take all of our friends and we're going to spend $100 and get a few pizzas and hang out and just, uh, you know, spend some time uh, enjoying what we've what we've uh, spent the hundred dollars on um, that activity in and of itself is economic activity that has more impact than just getting a pizza on our our table and then making sure that we're full and not still hungry at the end of the night um, what what happens is and I chose this picture because we see, multiple people involved in the process, even though realistically a single pizza is not necessarily going to need more than one person in this, in this type of, you know, wood fired setting. Um, but there are more people that, that go into kind of the restaurant business. And what happens when we go with our friends to, to, uh, get some pizza is the people who work there get a paycheck just like we got that led us to have this hundred dollars. So now we're going to imagine one of these guys got their paycheck and is going to decide they're also relatively confident. They saw a busy week at the pizza place. They saw a lot of people willing to spend their money, um, talking about optimism and, and the things that they're, they're doing, going to college, starting a new business, just bought a house. And so he says, you know what, I've got disposable income as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, out and see a movie. And I'm going to you know, have, a, have an evening out, see a movie, get some drinks, um, kind of date night kind of scenario. And that chain continues on. Someone who works at the movie theater gets their paycheck and they maybe um, are going to do something in the economy with that money and so on and so on. And so the value of, of a single dollar in the economy is, is not just in kind of what it's buying in physical sense, but it's also in, in how rapidly um, we're, we're using it 
in and the confidence that comes into play not necessarily in in every case but the idea that you're going to freely go spend your money on something new um is really the heart of consumer confidence that we try to measure as a way of seeing how the economy is going and what we can expect from the economy. So in this scenario that I've described, the economy is doing well and everybody is taking their disposable income and they're spending that disposable income and trying to get more enjoyment out of, out of, uh, out of that through consumption. Um, if we were to take this scenario in reverse and we were to say, I chose not to spend my money. So the pizza place was really slow. So they ended up maybe cutting hours. And so it wasn't even a choice for this guy. He didn't go to the movie theater. And so the movie theater is going to cut hours as well. And the chain continues on and on. So if we sense that times are good, we're going to actually, if, if we do it on a large enough scale with a lot of people in the aggregate, the result is going to be an expansion or a, a good economy. If we sense a, a, a recession is coming and we feel like we need to tighten the belt and not spend more money, then the places that depend on us spending more money are going to have to do the same by kind of necessity. And we are seeing kind of a, a, a very unique scenario of that playing out right now with COVID. And I'm, I'm going to eventually probably try to build a, a lesson, um, but I'm going to wait until I get more into um, regular lessons on macroeconomics. And there's so much related to COVID that, that has an effect on the economy and it's going to depend on which sector you're talking about, and it's going to depend on which country you're talking about. Even sometimes, uh, you know, state and city policies are playing a major role. So there's a lot of nuance to it. There's not, um, you know, simplified and definitive answers. But these things that we're talking about when it comes to me, responding to how I feel the economy is going by tightening the belt. Those are uh, marginal things that are putting pressures on the economy to do certain things. And when enough people are applying that same pressure, we end up with kind of an aggregate shift or an aggregate chain. 